with our next speaker, Peter So from MIT. He's Professor of Mechanical Engineering and Biological Engineering at MIT. Peter, all yours. Um, good evening. Um, it is a pleasure to be here to give a hot topic talk about some of um, one of the area in nonlinear microscopy that I thought that I can, within 10 minutes, maybe present something that would make some sense. Specifically, I want to talk a little bit about um, computation um, enhanced nonlinear optical microscopy uh, based on maximum likelihood estimation. Um, of course, maximum likelihood estimation is not a new area. It has been used in imaging for a very long time. For decades, electron microscopy have used it, uh, this approach to synthesis data from multiple particles to generate a consensus structure. Um, it has been used in looking at 3D uh, wide field image stacks to generate uh, deconvoluted um, images. It has been recently used in looking at fluorescence lifetime data, and of course it's the basis for a number of super resolution imaging techniques today. So before I go on to um, talking a little bit about how we are using about maximum likelihood for some of our applications, I just want to give a quick primer. So what is uh, maximum likelihood estimation in an image? So in general, we are given a set of intensity measurement i that we want to find the most probable emitter fluence distribution lambda, that is the object. And we want to, uh, thinking about an image, if we look at a particular pixel i, what we want to estimate is the fluence lambda given the intensity measure the intensity i based on a Poisson statistics. And in that case, the probability of measuring a given image uh, i uh, based on certain fluence is the product of the probability of each of the pixels. And typically, what we would like to measure in general is um, the, uh, the probability itself is computationally difficult to assess. Uh, therefore, we often want to look at the logarithm of the, pop the logarithm of the probability because the logarithm is a monotonic function, and so if we maximize the logarithm, we maximize the probability. So let's summarize it a little bit. So in general, we want to distill the Fluence distribution lambda uh, based on maximizing the probability given a set of intensity i, and then. Uh, we are basing on a Poisson pyre. But one of the issues is the Poisson pyre in general is a very weak constraint. By itself, it's often not sufficient to deduce what is the Fluence distribution that we care about. So in general, what we typically want to have is additional constraints, such as uh, non-negativity or smoothness constraints. But what we think the most powerful constraints are typically by for each voxel, the Fluence distribution, if we can measure it by multiple different ways, so that we can have multiple intensity measurement by different methods of the same Fluence distribution, and if we can link it through a quantitative optical model, we can actually obtain much better estimate. Let me give you a couple examples on what I mean by that. So one of the application that we use this approach, we try to improve axial resolution of temporal focusing wide field two photon microscope. Uh, temporal focusing uh, microscopy is one of the fastest nonlinear microscopy today. In the seminal work by um, Ali Pasa Varisi's group, they have been able to image the communications of all the neurons in the head of the worm in, in real time. And however, if you look at the image, the image is relatively fuzzy. And if you take a look at the optical transfer function specifically, if you look at the, the, uh, the rightmost um, optical transfer function that corresponds to the temporal focusing, um, there's no pointer, uh, corresponding to the temporal focusing um, 
uh, transfer function, you can see that it has a lot of missing frequency component similar to the wide field um, optical transfer function. And so the question is how do you solve this problem? One way to solve this problem that we have implemented is by combining wide field two photon with structural illumination. In this case, you can see that with structural illumination, you can quickly reduce the background contribution by rejecting the hour of focus photons. But the problem about that is after you reject the hour of focus photons, you are wasting a lot of the photons that you could in principle use. So what is the solution of that? If we can reassign the hour of focus photon to the correct location, that would be much better. So the way that we imp we approach that is using a maximum likelihood estimation using the redundant data from both the structure and the uniform image stacks and then we link it through the physical model um, describing the uh, structure like wide field two photon microscope and then from there we can obtain much better image based on that approach if you compare on the left side the uniform uh, wide field illumination and also at the middle the normal structure like uh, background rejection and on the right the maximum likelihood approach you see that you have obtained a much better image you have optical axial resolution comparable with pond scanning and also you improve your signal to background ratio by almost two to three times let me give you a second example um, Temple focusing is very good because it's fast, but it doesn't go very deep. So another method that improves speed but goes very deep is a multifocal, multifotron microscope, MMM, multi NOPMT based MMM system allow you to image um, neurons, uh, several hundred microns in the brain with all the synaptic structure, we have comparable signal to noise, a single focus system. However, what is the problem of that? One of the problem of that is in a MMM type system, the scattered emission photon that cause talk into different anodes would generate a bunch of ghost images. And which is not very good. So what is our solution? Our solution is again using a maximum likelihood analysis of the optical model of the MMM system and modeling the emission uh, cost talk process, we are able to pretty much completely eliminate all the cost talk artifacts. Also, by reassigning the photon to the correct location, we have 200 to 300 times improvement uh, when we go to deep, uh, deep in the brain, about a couple hundred microns. Um, the improvement is greater the deeper you go because the cost talk is greater. So, I think I give you a couple examples on why this approach is useful. Um, I want to give you a few other directions, a couple other directions that we are going that we think could be, um, could be interesting. One of them is we talked about wide field two photon microscope, which is very fast. Um, but w if we can image a whole 3D volume at a time, that is better. So one of the things that we are developing is um, how to do a volumetric imaging with a wide field two photon. Chris Seuss group has demonstrated that if you include a quadratic chirp in the laser pulse, you can shift the focal plane back and forth axially. Now, if you split the spectrum into different packs, and then give it different chirp components, you can generate multiple excitation plane, which is relatively good, but the, that's not the only problem with um, volumetric imaging. In, the problem is for high NA objective, only one of the plane is in focus at a time. So what is the solution of that? The solution of that is to work with some of our colleagues, we have experts in volume hologram. Using a volume hologram, we can we distribute the, two fo the image from the two focal plane, we focus it into two locations into the uh, CCD camera. Um, one of the issues with that is volume hologram typically have very low axial resolution. 
So what is the solution of that, which is the solution is the same as what I described earlier with just wide field two photon, is if you combine structural light and maximum likelihood photon reassignment, you can significantly re improve the result. In this case, we are imaging two layers of the mouse intestine, and you can see the dynamics of the two layers at the same time. And I would finally conclude by showing that it would also be very useful for looking at spectral decomposition, multi-photon microscope. With spectral decomposition, you need to have very high signal to noise ratio images. Um, but in general, that's not consistent with high speed imaging. So to solve this problem, we combine maximum likelihood with wavelength Poisson denoising and fluctuation correlation analysis. As you can see, we can very substantially um, improve, reduce the amount of photon needed for spectral decomposition. At the same time, we allow us to measure the number density of the follow for each pixel. So I would li just like to conclude by thanking all the students and my collaborators that have been instrumental to this work. Thank you very much.